What is up everyone? I am back with a Pedal Builders Reacts video and guess what? I have a real Analog Man King of Tone right in front of me and I'm going to do some analysis with my multimeter and I have my oscilloscope to do uh, some EQ analysis and take you know pretty graphs and everything else. So this is a brand new King of Tone. Uh, it was manufactured 1221, so it has the new diodes in it. So I'll be comparing the new diodes with the uh, 1S1588 that is in the clone here. And I do want to say that this is an educational video. This is not meant to, uh, you know, basically participate in the conversation of um, cloning and everything. This is more or less just an educational, how do you see the differences between these two or similarities between these two? Uh, looking at some schematic, and um, if you're on the wait list for this, maybe this is a good option to hold you over. Um, so yeah, all the cloning ethics aside, this is just an educational video. Let's get into it. So, uh, since this is a pedal build reacts, let's see how these knobs compare to the real King of Tone knobs. All right, so it uh, looks like the knobs on this are a little bit higher torque than the I don't know what brand. These knobs are, uh, brand these pots are. So these pots have higher torque. These are alpha, I believe. Yep, alpha. Um, or actually no name, which I'm going to guess are actually alphas. But high torque, just like an alpha. A little bit lower torque required for this. Um, switches feel about the same. There is a little bit of a difference, but not enough to really mention. LEDs, this is interesting. So these on the real King of Tone, this is the high gain on the red side, by the way, mod, uh, as we'll notice and see shortly here with that. Um, the LEDs are look like they've been scratched to get like an opaque sort of look. So uh, let's see if I get the camera to focus on it. But it's kind of hard to see, but they, it looks like they're just like kind of ground down with some sandpaper or something. I don't know, I'm not too crazy about that look. Uh, not sure why they do that. But uh, before I continue further, huge shout out to Giannis who let me borrow this uh, King of Tone. And let's flip it over. We have some jacks here, some differences in the jacks. Obviously the metal on the top here and it looks like it is grounded to the chassis. Um, that way, as we saw in my previous video, uh, this is grounded to the chassis somewhere. I don't know how or where uh, it's grounded, but uh, these jacks are really nice, high quality. They uh, are supposed to be isolated, so somewhere in there, uh, as we've noticed, the chassis is grounded. This is grounded too. One thing I mentioned in the other one, which I don't really see here, is there's normally, at least on the King of Tones that I've seen, a drill out here so it really makes sure that the this is um completely sealed the chassis is grounded through and through for noise uh basically to, to make sure there's no interference coming up into the sensitive noisy or the circuits uh, i don't know if you can see this well on camera but there is a little bit of a size difference the real king of tone is slightly smaller it's the same exact, I don't know, what would that be, height, I guess, or uh, width, length? No, length. That would be length. And the width is a little shorter. Not by much. You would not know. The paint, I'm just going to comment quickly on the paint. It's literally identical. Um, I noticed that the King of Tone, the real King of Tone, has a little bit more of a luster to the gold where this is just like gold, gold. I don't know. There's um, like metallic flakes in the real King of Tone, if that is a thing. But I'm glad that mine say 68 pedals, and it does not say like the Lyrock brand, if you can. Um, well, it, I noticed that the Lyrock, Lyrock brand will actually come delivered with the King of Tone and use the Analog Man, so just be aware of that. Um, this is the high gain mod. Interesting thing about the high gain mod nowadays is that they do not cover up what kind of chip is in here. Um, not really sure why they even mark it anymore because it kind of the cat's out of the bag. That it's simply a 100k resistor, and it is this one here um, that creates the high gain high gain mod. And on the normal channel, uh, that is a 1k 
resistor. So 100K for high gain, 1K for normal gain, and that's literally it, the difference. Um, Component-wise, everything looks the same. You'll notice that the biggest difference maybe is this 104, which I believe is, uh, well, it's, it's one microfarad. Um, I think, 0.1? Can't remember now. Uh, I'll add it in the video. Yeah. 105. Nope, that's 0.1. Sorry. Uh, every time I turn the camera on, I feel like I lose some IQ. So 104 means 0.1 microfarad. And this is, I believe, a 100 volts rated. These are a little lot smaller. Um, and you'll see 27F. So I believe that those are lower voltage rated. But either way... They're both way over what they need to be um, to get the sound. So you can look here, uh, Rubicon, Nishikon, uh, similar quality, I mean, at least from what everyone says. You still see, again, this is the 1221 um, edition, so you still see the carbon, carbon composition resistors on the schematic here. Um, I'll show you real quick the carbon composition. Like this 10K, there's a 1K that's carbon composition. Um, this one over here. And that's all one for one. So in my unit here, it looks exactly like the King of Tone that is in front of me. Going to go real quick into using my Proster, <laughs> my digital multimeter. So I'm going to set this one at high gain setting because it, one really cool feature is that I can, on the fly, determine the high gain setting of this pedal. So I'm going to just simply touch here and then this 1K resistor and it measures 99.1. So now you're kind of wondering like, hey, Ryan, why is that measure 99.1? Well... There is an additional resistor right here that's 100K, and it, this basically swaps in and out that 100K resistor and the 1K. So you're going to see here, now it's going to measure. I've just flipped the switch down to low gain. Now it's 0.99K. So I think it's actually just adding in the 100K. Well, maybe not. But it's definitely going to kick that up to now it's, uh, you know, 99 over here, I'm going to touch basically the layout's very similar. And the high gain is 98.5. Again, going over to this, 68 pedals. The high gain setting is getting me, so before it was 98.5, 99.0. So guess what? I bet you those are going to sound exactly the same. Uh, going over here on the normal side, we get 98. Point, or 90, 990 ohms, so not quite 1K. I hope I spoke correctly on the other one. I'll swap. Actually, no, before I do that. So that's 990 ohms. This is 991 ohms, super close. <laughs> and let's go here, click this, see what the high gain would measure out to, 98.7. Guess what? 98.7, which is a really good radio station over here, and 98.6K, so close. So this <laughs> high gain resistor could be very, very close. So guess what? This switch and switching in those resistors uh, will basically give you that high gain. Going to match, and we're going to look at my oscilloscope in a few. So stay tuned for that and make sure the EQ looks pretty much on top of each other. We're going to find out if it does or does not. I'm going to switch this over to the diode testing. So if you remember my last video, and if you have read online, King of Tone, they've uh, apparently been saying that they've been running out of the 1S1588 diodes, the same ones that you can find in various numerous pedals, Ibanez pedals. I know it specifically as the one that's in the Ibanez TS-10, because uh, I use that in all my TS-10 clones, the 1588, 1S1588. They swapped them out, and they started using this on semiconductor brand. I can't really see. It might be, yeah, it's a 4148 diode. So 
I'm going to measure the forward voltage drop of these diodes and compare it to what is in the King of Tone, the real King of Tone. So, and I verified before that these are real 1S1588s in my previous video, so uh, no need to explore that. So we get 0 0.60 volts forward drop. Uh, come on. This is a little hard because of the way that the diodes are laid down. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, because I've done this one before, that it's 0 0.60, I promise. Oh, there it goes, 0 0.62. Sorry, okay. It's 0 0.60, 0 0.62, 0 0.60. What's this last one? 0.59. Okay, so a little variation. That's totally expected. All right, now real king of tone. And this is mainly engaged when you do the, I believe, the high gain setting on the dip switches. So, come on. 0.61 forward drop. 0.61. Yeah, let's call that 0.61. Forward drop. 0.612. My guess with these were all in the same batch. And the last one, drum roll. Come on. Alright, I was able to get a reading. I think it's just my placement of my probe makes a difference. See, there it goes. So now they are all basically 0 0.61, 0 0.62 across the board, which going back to the uh, 1S1588. It's pretty close to that. So um, the new diodes, they measure, you know, same as the old ones. I'd have to imagine they sound the same as the old units as well. Um, but th I think that, you know, basically completes my analysis here. And I'm going to do some waveform analysis now. All right, I just wanted to show something and illustrate something. Um, we talk about pots being 20% difference and how that can make a pedal sound different. Um, right here, I'm comparing using my oscilloscope uh, the clone on the left with the real analog man on the right. And I did some analysis. Uh, I did the red channel first, and I did the yellow channel second. And both of them showed that the King of Clone, the 68 pedals, was riding a little hot. So all I did in this case is I took the volume, I notched it down like from noon to that much, which might be just the way that the knob was put in. And you can see here where... The plot was going, 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 and I just adjusted that pot ever so slightly, and now the analysis is continuing. But they're like basically riding on top of each other down the curve uh, as it, you know, that's the latest measurement. It's a little hotter at that point, but I guess what I'm trying to say is 20% tolerance and the way that these pot or knobs were installed could make a huge difference, or not huge, actually. I take that back. Could make slight difference in the way that the pedal sounds, perceived, loudness, whatever. So when you see demos of ampli or anything, really, side by side, you know, please, please, please take note and consideration that without a scope like this, doing an analysis, you're going to have a really hard time convincing really anyone that one sounds better than the other. Um, I mean, then it will be completely anecdotal uh, based on that, but, you know, even this, I think probably my next thing to get this on top of each other is to adjust the tone, which it looks like it is popped up a little bit. I'm going to slide that down, and you can see over here that it's already taken effect. So I'm going to do some... On some more tweaking and I'm gonna say that 
the little wiggling that I'm doing on these, like literally from here to here, to bring these things in alignment is totally acceptable. And if it's consistent, it's just likely that the knobs were placed on these pots. And I can actually test. Let's see. That's where the knob goes, over here. Let's see how far down. Yeah. It looks to me, I don't know. They could be different. They could be the same. The point is that these are manually inserted on, not with a machine. So they could be changed or off by ever so slightly, which means you're all at noon position is going to be close, but never perfect unless you do a proper analysis with a proper tool.